Okay guys, welcome to the Friday Waffle. Um, I'm actually recording this on a Friday, which makes a nice, <coughs> excuse me, a nice change. Now you'll notice this one is in colour. Uh, my last sort of few waffles have been in black and white. Um, and I'm also extremely aware of uh, the sort of lacking, lack of kind of gaming topics in my Friday Waffles. I mean, I've got a comment here from last week, which, which kind of resonated with me. Um, it was a chap, doesn't matter what his name is, uh, this guy said, Sir, your videos are becoming dark and depressing. Is this a symptom of your state of mind? Um, <laughs> yes and no, absolutely. I've always been one of these people that, you know, I just talk, um, I, I tell you as it is, um, I, I'm very much heart in my sleeve, I'm going to move that a bit closer like so, very much a heart in my sleeve type of person, you know, I've always been like that, but I am so aware that, not even just my, my Friday waffle, you know, there's been a complete lack of videos, gaming videos, um, and you know, the only videos I'm really doing at the moment are Friday waffles, and they've kind of, they've lost their way when it comes to gaming stuff, um, I am going to apologise about that. It's it's just where I am in my life at the moment. I mean, uh, I am infinitely better than I was. I'm not, I mean, you're saying about state of mind. I am absolutely fine. I'm not got, you know, we all get down in the dumps. We all get things that worry us and I'm no different. Um, I kind of pride myself on being a very, very optimistic person. I really do. You know, I don't let myself dwell too much on on bad things. I always look for the kind of positive and things. Um, but even the best of us, it, you know, real life can wear us down. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go, um, you know, keep going on about it. So I'm going to just move swiftly on. But Anyway, I'm glad it's Friday. It says work has just been insanely busy. Um, mental busy, man, absolutely mental busy. Uh, there's a few ends in the fire, shall we say, which I'm not going to say too much about, you know, because, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know as and when things happen. But, and I don't want to bore people, but all I can say, guys, is I'm, I am insanely aware of lack of videos now. I mean, I notice my subscriber numbers are still going up. God knows why, because I don't deserve it. I absolutely don't deserve it. And I do feel that I'm neglecting people. I really do. Um, this week I've got my daughter and it's always... I'm not making excuses, but I am making excuses. When I've got my daughter, she tends to uh, park herself in the games room. And that's where I generally make most of my videos, unless I'm doing a live stream on my meme cab or something. But... When I'm making run of the mill videos, that's I use that computer and the wee bugger likes to sit in there and she uses my computer and she watches Netflix and she plays the PlayStation 4. So basically the week that I've got her it is difficult, or at least it's more difficult to make videos than it would be. But um, next week I will be free to make videos and I'm absolutely going to promise you that I will get at least a couple of videos out. Um, I mean I've got I've got a lot more things going on in my life now and there's, uh, I'm not going to say very much about it, but I have been going through a pretty shit time, but something really excellent happened to me last week, which has put a stupid big smile on my face. Um, it's made a big, big difference to me, and it's certainly going to make coping with the, the shite stuff a lot, lot better. So, um, yeah, that person knows who they are, put it that way. Not that they're going to be watching this video. Anyway, so, hi, this week... Not played a single video game, I've not even had the meme cab on. In fact, what I'm going to do is, after I've recorded this, I mean, it's only, what time is it? It's half past eight. I'm actually going to uh, play the meme cab for a couple of hours after I've done this waffle. I'm not going to dwell on too long because I want to I want to play some games and that's something I've not done for a wee while. I've just been been playing pool, actually. I've been playing a bit of pool. I used to, I used to really enjoy pool when I was a kid. I um, used to play in a pool league in the rugby club uh, and I was in, there was two leagues, there was like the A and B league, the A was the better players and I came second in the, in the pool league so I used to really enjoy it so I've been playing a bit more pool again, um, not doing a lot of running, you can probably see I don't know, a little double chin, certainly getting a bit fatter looking I think, um, still hitting the gym as much, still go to spin class um, but I have been a bit lazy the last week or so and I intend to rectify that but 
definitely going to get some videos out there, I absolutely promise you. Now, I know you say you've got to do it when you're ready, and I understand that, um, but I'm missing doing them, and I will get back to it. Excuse me a little second. Before I, uh, I talk about anything else, obviously, like everybody else, I read the news, um, I, I watched the news today, and there's that absolute atrocity in New Zealand. Some mentalist went in and killed, I think, at the last count, it was about 41 people with a gun. All I can say is if anybody, you know, I mean, my heart, heartfelt condolences go out to everybody that's been affected, you know, there should be no place for people like him. I just don't understand it one little bit. If there's anybody watching this video that's in New Zealand, you know, sending all my love to you guys because it's just awful. I mean, there's been a slight increase in terrorism again, even in the UK, um, which is really sad. There is no place for terrorism and I'm not going to get all preachy and political, but I don't really do politics. I don't have a religion. I would very, very much tell myself as an atheist and I just don't understand why other people want to kill other people, you know, in the name of religion, whatever. It's, I don't think there's any religion that actually uh, promotes killing other people. So yeah, it's when you hear the things like that in the news, it just it puts every single thing into perspective. You know, when we're when we're complaining about you know how long an update takes in the PS4 or whatever, and then you look at that, it's just shit. So yeah, awful. But anyway, more upbeat. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at last week's Friday waffle and see if there's any questions. And what I usually do is I just kind of read out the comments from last week. Um, now I was always apologising like I seem to do every week. I was apologising about lucky videos and Country Rodas says, Alan, you lunatic. Stop apologising. We love you just the way you are. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and let's have a look. Uh, Yoldy Gamer Steve, he replied, we certainly do. And Panther UK, I we do indeed. So thank you very, very much, guys. Your your love and support is always, always appreciated. And I can't stress that enough. Come on, what's going on here? I'm using that's an iPad Mini, and it's it's ancient, but you know what? It still works, although it is a bit, a bit sluggish. Right? Come on, who do we get out of this? What's going on? X. Come on, get out of the comments. Why is that not? How do we get out of the comments? Ah, there we go. Right, uh, Ian Hunter. How are you doing, Ian? Hi, Alan. I hope you're fitting well. A question for the waffle. As a bit of a diversion from gaming, I was wondering if you still use video recorders. I've played three Betamax machines to destruction and still currently own four VHS machines. I'm watching a recording you made back in the 1980s. It's very nostalgic. What are your thoughts? <laughs> recording you made back in the 1980s is that the piss take one that I did or else is it or is it the one where me and my mates are fanning about let me know what when you're talking about Ian um, video recorders no when I moved house not this time but the time before which would be 2001 I had a shitload of video tapes and I flung them all out because I didn't have any way to play them and as much as I like original hardware, one thing I don't miss is videotapes. I mean, I watch all my videos on things like this. I stream my videos. I don't... I mean, I've got DVDs sitting in my uh, my unit in the living room. And rather than putting a DVD into the player to play it, I'll just download it. I'll just stream it. You know what I mean? Streaming for me is the way forwards. Um, so to answer your question, Ian, I don't, oh, excuse me, Windy Pops, I don't own any, um, I don't own any video recorders, I couldn't even tell you the last time I owned one, blimey, it must have been, I don't know, probably about, maybe 2000, 2001, something like that, maybe, can't remember, I remember getting a, a big widescreen TV, uh, yeah, and I had a, I had a, it's a Nikam stereo. Do you remember that Nikam stereo? My, my mum and dad's first ever video recorder. It was uh, rented from, was it British? Really, I think it was. 
and then eventually they bought a Betamax. I, yeah, we didn't have that for very long because after a very short space of time, despite it being a better of the two systems, VHS basically took over the market and uh, Betamax kind of went to the big uh, video player graveyard in the sky. So no, I don't own any, Ian. Um, it's not something that I'm really interested in, to be honest with you. Um, I just, I'm all about ease. So if I can watch, you know, um, if I can watch something on a tablet or streaming, then I'll always do that. But anyway, listen, Ian, thanks for your question, buddy. Next up, we've got down the rabbit hole, my mate Kev. Thanks, Kev. Hi, Alan. I'm going on holidays soon, so this is my last set of questions for you for a while. Where are you going, Kev? Anyone nice, mate? First of all, since I own a 1971 computer space, I just have to ask you, can games be considered antiques, or should they just be games that are played? I don't know. what I mean, what is the... Firstly... You're a lucky sod owning that computer space. I couldn't believe it when you first mentioned that you had one. Um, that is awesome. To anybody that doesn't know what computer space was, I think that was kind of the very first arcade game. I mean, Pong did come along after it, but computer space was uh, was the very, very first one, I believe. And Kev's got one, and it's awesome. Um, could a game be considered an antique? I don't know what is... What is the definition, sorry, what is the definition of an antique? Some might say, my good self, I'm an antique. Is it something that's old? I don't know. I don't know when I don't. That'd be an interesting thing. I've even got my Alexa. I could have spoke to Alexa and asked what antique means. I don't know what antique actually is. But if something over, has something got to be a certain age before it becomes an antique? I mean, I, I could never imagine... Um, I could never imagine calling something that you owned in the 1980s. Say, for example, Ian's uh, video recorder. Video recorders. I couldn't imagine calling them an antique. I'm guessing an antique is something over a certain age. So I would imagine that there are no video games that could be classed as antiques. Don't know. Does anybody know what antique means? I'm, I can only assume it must be something over a certain length of time or a certain age is classed as an antique. So I suppose your 1971 computer space will be getting into that territory, but technically that's only, what, 71, 40, I don't know, 49, 48 years old, something like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably in another 50 years' time, 100%, I think it would be classed as an antique. But I can only imagine... It's when something gets over a certain age, it can be classed as an antique. But what do I know? I'm probably talking pish. Secondly, what's the longest you have ever mistakenly left a console turned on? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously nowadays consoles can be, they can, they can go into hibernate mode. So I generally, you know, my PlayStation, I, gen I generally keep that in hibernate mode. But then that's, that's deliberate. You're asking what is the longest. I don't think I've ever knowingly had a console turned on for any length of time or a computer. But back in the very, very, oh, when would it be, 1983 when I'd first got my Commodore 64, I had a couple of games, crap games that were uh, Interceptor micro games, Crazy Kong and Frogger 64. And they were bloody awful. They were absolutely awful. Then my mate um, had a mate who I knew from uh, through work. Excuse me a second. I had a mate who I met through, uh, yeah, I used to work part-time. This guy, Brian. Now, we got to talk to Brian, and it turns out he had uh, a Commodore 64 as well. And we were talking about the number of games that we had and I told him I had about four or I don't know how many it was I only had a handful of games and then he said oh I've got like 70 and I'm like how can you own 70 games and he, he told me well you can copy them now this was something that was completely new to me I didn't know what copying was so anyway cut a long story short um, we agreed that Brian was going to come up to my house one day and he had the C90 tape chock full of uh, of games. So we arrived, it was I was still 
you know, loving my mum and dad at that point. So Brian turned up, sure enough, one evening, and we proceeded to play through, play through. Archie, get out of there! Dog's going into the cupboard. Out of there, you! Um, yeah, we proceeded to load up game after game and, you know, play them for a while. And then I said to him, oh, can I copy, can I copy your games? And he's like, oh, no, I can't. I need to go. I need to go. I've got to go. And I'm like, well, man, you've just, you know, he's just brought up all these games and then he's telling me I can't copy them. So I was basically going to be stuck with the two shit games that I, that I bought. So what I did was I got him to load up and it was a Kong by Anarog Software. I, and I got him to load it up and then he disappeared. Now, this game was like head and shoulders better than anything else that I'd ever played in the Commodore 64. To me, it was just like, wow, it was like arcade perfect. And uh, so what I did was, I left my computer on all through the night, then I had school in the morning and I left the computer on still, and then when I came home at night, I still had this game to play. So that was the only way I could possibly get to play the game. I didn't have any means of copying it, I didn't copy the game, so I've effectively left the computer on for, I don't know, from like one night right through, probably about 24 hours, which I would never suggest you do. Um, I'll give you a laugh, and I think I mentioned it in a waffle. I was uh, repairing a, an Amstrad CPC 464 a couple of weeks ago. I swapped out the tape deck, the tape deck wasn't working, swapped it out, got it working, and then I went upstairs for 20 minutes to put some d uh, games onto, a, onto my phone so I could load them through a sort of like a, as a, a WAV file. And when I came downstairs, the monitor had gone off and there was smoke coming out of it. So, you know, more hardware like that, I would never, ever, ever suggest you leave on. Certainly not overnight. By, by all means, if you're in the room with it, that's fine. But yeah, I left this Commodore 64 on for a whole day just so I didn't lose the game. Not that I would suggest you actually do that, guys. But yeah, that was, that was my one. Um, thirdly, do you have any games you would consider a guilty pleasure? <laughs> a game that you could consider as being shite, but I actually enjoy. I'm trying to think. Mm, guilty pleasure. Can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, there's a game which I always mean to actually uh, do a, a 10 minute waffle, a 10 minute waffle, a 10 minute mashup on even, it's a game called Olympic, is it Olympic Games on the original PlayStation and it looks absolutely shit but I love it because it is purely a joystick waggler and I think it got absolutely canned or panned I should say, it, was, it had terrible reviews and I actually bought it maybe about a year ago, just so I could play it. I've not actually played it, so I will need to do a 10 minute mashup of it. But I can't think of any other games, Kev, that were technically deemed as shite that I thought was good. There was a few games that, that probably weren't regarded as good, like Formula One uh, on the Spectrum by CRL. It's a kind of football manager game. I used to love it. I loved Football Manager, I really did. And then there was one that came out called Software Star, I think it was. Basically, you've got to, you're, you play the part of a software house and you've got to program games, you've got to try and sell them and that kind of stuff. But I can't think of any, any woeful game that, uh, that I enjoyed. But yeah, that Olympic game, it's certainly not a classic at all, but I love it because it's got, it's just, it's a really good kind of decathlon game. Fourth, have you ever tossed something in the bin that you now regret? Absolutely. Um, what have I flung in the bin? I flung my Zap collection in the bin. I flung my, I flung a Commodore 64 that wasn't working. It might have been something really, really simple. I flung that in the bin, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. That was before, well, eBay was a thing, but I don't know, people weren't really into collecting kind of broken hardware. Anything else, there's been numerous TVs, I mean I've taken up big massive CRT TVs which looking back now I wish I'd kept but you know what, I didn't have anywhere to put it so did I regret throwing it out? Not at all, if I could go back in time and bring it forwards to 2018, 2019 even then I probably would but can't think of anything else but yeah certainly my my, uh, 
my Zap 64, I had, when I see the full collection, I had every single uh, edition from, well, edition 1 up till about, I don't know, 1987, 1988, something like that. So, yeah, I tossed them all in the bucket, because, I mean, who wants magazines? Uh, I've got an absolute, if anybody is looking for magazines, let me know, I have got, I've got an insane bundle of magazines and I'm one of these people I don't like throwing anything out um, so if you're looking for some old magazines give me a shout or maybe the problem with magazines is is they're heavy and nobody's going to want to pay for getting them delivered that is the problem so number five which of your videos earned you the most subscribers how can you how can you tell? I don't know how you could possibly tell. I don't know. I've got no idea, Kev. How can you actually work that one out? I mean, I've not put any videos other than the Fidey Waffle out for a couple of weeks and my subscribers are kind of steadily going up. So, I mean, as far as most views, I think my most viewed video is the GPD XD versus the NVIDIA Shield. I think that might be my most viewed video. I certainly don't have any videos that run into thousands. Um, I have got some older videos that are non-game related. Um, I've got an episode of uh, 1581, which was a, a quiz show back in the sort of 90s, and my dad actually won it. So if you want to watch my dad win in 1581, just type in 1581 in my... Uh, in my main Meister search bar thing and you'll find it. But yeah, I think the GPD versus the NVIDIA Shield is my most viewed video. But as far as what video gave you the most subs, I don't really know how you can possibly tell that. I mean, I've never put a video out and then seen the subs go woof. You know, generally subs is just one of these things. It can just, it can, you know, they can go up for no reason. Um, so yeah, I can't really answer that one, Kevin. Honest answer is, I've got no idea. Finally, you mentioned last week you're a hardware collector, not a game collector. So I wonder which hardware do you have the least number of games for? And which hardware do you have the most games for? Um, I'm guessing Virtual Boy for the least and MAME for the most. Well, yeah, I'm not going to class MAME because that's, that's just ROMs. Um, I've got, what computers have I got? I've got a, a Sword M5 computer, I don't have any games. No, I tell a lie, I think I've got two games for it, I think they're on cartridge. I've also got an MSX, which I don't own any games for. I've also got a VIC-20, which I don't own any games for. I've also got a ZX81. Um, anything else? I think that is it. An Atari ST, don't own any games. So yeah, I've got quite a few computers, which I don't own any games for. As far as the system that I have, I mean, Virtual Boy, I've got about, if you're talking original games, then yeah, the Virt Virtual Boy, I've got maybe 10 games for it, I think, something like that. I actually need to play, you know, I've not played my Virtual Boy for a long, long time. Um, people going about how you get headaches, any time I did play it, I never really found an issue. Not that I played it for any length of time or enough, but... Um, but yeah, I was going to say there, uh, Virtual Boy, I think I won about maybe 10 games or something like that. Um, the system that I own the most for, would it would definitely be the Xbox 360. I've got about, I don't know, must have about maybe 150 games for it, something like that. Um, yeah. So, anyway, Kev, listen, thank you very, very much for the, the questions, as always, Squire, and I hope you have an absolutely excellent uh, holiday. Mr. Milestar, the Friday Waffle are coming soon. Well, here it is, just for you, mate. Accessible gaming definitely could rent game systems. I remember my aunt and uncle renting their TV in an Atari VCS with Air Sea Battle in England. <laughs> Actually, somebody was asking me, could you rent video game systems from Blockbuster and I couldn't remember if he did. I think I think I said I'm sure you could but I wasn't 100% sure but quite a few people have said you could actually. A waffle, sorry that, that was a that was accessible gaming thank you very much. Um, next up is Panther UK it's Chris. A waffle of the usual high standards squire. Yes Monty on the run is one hell of a piece of music no argument there. 
Gordon Tomb and Game, by the way. Sid effects. Ah, right, excellent. Um, yeah, my mate uh, Chris has done. Uh, he's he's done this series of uh, Sid tunes, but they're actually been made into stereo. They're really, really, really good. So I'll only have a look at that actually. Gordian Tomb. I, yeah, you mentioned that one last week, Chris, and I couldn't remember that. I've never actually heard of it. Good to see you're on the possible up. Uh, possible up and up, mate. Keep smiling. Thanks very much, Chris. For next time, of all the different gadgets you've bought while collecting, what for you is the best modern doodad to fit in an old system? For me, it's probably very obviously the Sid FX dual sorry Sid board, closely followed by the S two SID. Can you give us a rundown on what you use? Um, cheers, I'll keep up the chance on. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, I mean, I've got. I've got quite a few of these. What have I got? I've got the EverDrive cartridge for the Mega Drive. I've got the EverDrive cartridge for the SNES. I've got an EverDrive cartridge for the Game Boy. EverDrive for the PC Engine. I've got a CF card for the Commodore Amiga. I've got... Is it a CF card, I think? Or is it an ST card? Whatever it is for the BBC. I've got a ST... To SID or whatever it's called for my Atari. I've also got a cartridge, which is excellent. Spectrum, um, I use a Just Spectrum and it's got the, uh, what do you call it? It's actually got a, an SD slot in it, so I can just plug the games from that. But easily, the actual proper hardware, which has been released, proper bit of hardware, new hardware, without a shadow of doubt, is the... Christ, what's it called? Um, Ultimate 2 card? What's it called? Ultimate 2 cartridge? Is it? I can't remember. My head's going completely blank. Is it the Ultimate 2? Yeah, it is. And it's for the Commodore 64. And basically, this cartridge allows... It emulates... It connects up to the tape. It, emula it basically emulates a hard disk. Not a hard disk. It emulates a, hard, a floppy drive. But there's an interface that allows you to load tape images. So it basically, it emulates a floppy drive, it emulates cartridge, you can play SID chips, SID tunes through it, I should say. You can play like D64 files, you can load, as I say, you can load tape files. The great thing is when you load a tape file, it's like loading it for real. It's like, you know, it's quite slow, you get all the loading music and it's just wonderful, you know, I've got I would imagine every single Commodore 64 game you can ever, 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 that's ever been released on this thing. And being able to load it in an original Commodore 64 is just wonderful. It is definitely my, uh, my favourite. Ultimate, it is called the Ultimate too, yeah. Um, it's just one guy that actually makes them. Um, I can't remember his name offhand. And to get them, it's, it can be quite a lengthy wait. Because it, the guy makes them himself, you know, it's, uh, there's obviously going to be a delay in getting them. But uh, if you're a C64 man, you want, you've got an original computer, then get one of these. I mean, I think the one that Chris is mentioning, you can get cheaper options, but I think the Ultimate 2 does more. Because the fact that it can emulate tapes as well, it's just it's the best bit of kit ever. So, anyway, thanks very much, Chris. Uh, my mate Mark Lactobacillus Prime Arg, no audio there's no recovering that uh, that's the pits I feel for you mate, yeah last week I recorded a Friday waffle well I'd recorded half of it, I was going to do it in two sections, I recorded about 20 minutes and then I realised that I hadn't had the what do you call it, microphone switched on, which was a bit of a pain so I had to do it all over again. Uh, next is Colin. Colin Jones. How are you doing, Colin? Is this thing on? How many sound engineers does it take to change a light bulb? One, two, one, two, one, two, two. <laughs> I believe bollocks was shown to not be a curse word in a court of law back in the Sex Pistols day. Ah, never mind the bollocks. Interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting point, actually, Colin. Uh, question for the waffle, following on from the above, do you have any favourite one-liners, puns family friendly of course that you'd like to share, any favourite one-liners, no not really, 
No, I mean, I think, ah, uh, bollocks, that's not even a one-liner, that is just me, that's how I talk. I mean, I say it in real life as well. Any favourite one-liners? I mean, said the bishop to the nun, um, whatever. I'm trying to think, no, I can't think of any, I'm, uh, I'm pretty rubbish when it comes to stuff like that, Colin, but, uh, have you got any you want to share with us? <laughs> anyway, listen, um, Colin, thanks for that, buddy. Uh, and who's this? Monasar, the light, the placement of your head, the sombre tone of the video. Kind of like a Sinead O'Connor video. Yeah, he's talking about that. Yeah, look at that ugly get. Um, yeah, um, I was I was doing the black and white thing because I always think it makes you look not as ugly. It kind of, black and white does hide a plethora of uh, sins, if that's the right word to use. I don't know if that is. Um, but I thought, given that uh, my videos have been quite dark, and I don't mean for them to be, I thought I'd better do a nice, uh, a nice colour one. Oh, hang on a second. What am I doing? Whoa, 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 I've just jumped. What's going on here? I've just jumped into somebody else's video. Uh, right, next up is Gorgas Loradan. <laughs> I remember renting a SNES with Super Mario World in Castlevania in the early 90s from the local video rental shop in York. I was really impressed with it, but horrified at the price of the games, so being a tight bastard... <laughs> ah, no, I don't believe I just said that. Being a tight sort, I stuck to my Amiga. That was the thing, you know, you could get... You could get a Mega Drive and only afford to buy maybe one game or you could get a Commodore Amiga and you could copy games. So it was always a bit of a no-brainer for me. Uh, that's why I stuck to my Amiga. The cheap games from the local car boot were too much of a draw. I rented a Mega Drive 2 with Sonic and a horizontal shooter but I wasn't impressed. Um, yeah, the old uh, copied games. It just it, Like I said, I never really thought that the Mega Drive was much better than the Amiga. You know, and a lot of games, you know, you're... FIFA's and that, I always think it was better. I had a better controller, I had the three buttons as well, but yeah, there was the, the price difference, you know, and so that's why, that's why I always kept the, kept the Amiga. Next up is Batman. Hang on, I'm just going to do it so I can see them all. Another apology, big fella. I left you a lengthy message last week and said within that message that I would leave you a question later in the week, which I intended to do, but because life got in the way, I wasn't able to, so once again, apologies to you, so not a problem, but listen mate, hence the lack of me making videos, real life does take over, um, it absolutely does, and it should always, real, real life should always take precedence over something like this. So my subject for next week is, since you've been having a bit of a game related clear out, does that include your video game magazines, ah, like Zap and Crash and any other old gaming magazines you love? Or have you kept them safe and secure with a view to reading them again in the future? <sighs> I've still got them. I mean, I'm one of these people, if somebody's thrown out magazines, I take them. I'll always take them. But you know what? I've been in this house now for what, how long? Six months? September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Seven months? I've been in this house for seven months and I could probably count on two hands the number of magazines that I've read. It's kind of daft because I always think, I mean I do a lot of reading, I have a lot of baths. Um, not because I'm a smelly so I, I, I love lying in the bath, I love the heat, all that kind of stuff. And I do a lot of reading in the bath and I'm always conscious of getting old magazines damaged. But then I think to myself, why am I bothered about it? Because it's not like they're going to go anywhere. You know, what I should do is take in my old Zap magazines, read them. If, they, if they're disintegrated, throw them in the bucket. You know what I mean? Seriously, I've got... To, I'm trying to think height-wise. I don't know how high is that from the... I don't know, maybe... Three and a half, four feet. I've got two piles of magazines that are about probably three and a half, four feet height, height wise. So you can do your, imagine, in fact, yeah, imagine a kitchen table. I've got two piles of magazines which are probably slightly higher than the kitchen table. All kinds of magazines. I mean, I've got all the, uh, 
all the, what do you call it, retro gamers. I don't know why I even bother with Retro Gaming Magazine. I, I've got about 12 copies that I've not even opened. But, excuse me very much. Um, I've got loads and loads of like Amiga Powers and Amiga Formats and Sinclair User. I've got Crash Magazines. I've got Zap Magazines. Uh, yeah, I should really think. I mean, to be honest with you, if somebody came along and said to me, I'll give you £500 for the lot, I would probably, I would say, there you go, mate, I'll use the money because it's one of these things, I don't read them, I don't want to get rid of them as well. See, I am a bit of a hoarder and that's why I ended up with all this, all this stuff. So, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but, I mean, I'll hang on to them, but uh, I know you can go on eBay and sell them individually, but I can't be asked for that. But anyway, listen, but thanks very much for the question, mate. Next up, failed channel. YouTube doesn't matter. When you have time, we will watch and enjoy them. But of course, there are plenty of things that need doing in daily life. You could rent systems in Blockbuster. They had funky plastic briefcases and whopping deposits to put down. I think I do remember them. I think I've seen one for sale in the, in the case. So one for sale in the case and crack converters. <laughs> P.S. It's failed channel to newbies. Oh, of course, yeah, Mad Commodore. Yeah, anybody that used to watch Mad Commodore. Is there any particular reason that you changed your 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 uh, channel? Because you had an excellent channel. Um, it always saddens me when people do that because you had a great channel, and I, I can never remember that you're actually yeah you were Mad Commodore. Um, yeah, um, I do remember. Like I said, I think I do remember seeing the the consoles for sale. I think it might have been the Mega Drive, definitely the SNES, because I remember hiring. SNES games, I think you can buy them as well and they're a wee bit cheaper but anyway listen, thanks for the uh, thanks for the comment buddy next up, Wee Bob great to get back to listening to a waffle life has taken over from YouTube for me worth coming back just to listen to you shouting at the dogs in a nice way I've been finding it difficult to get back to YouTube at the moment um, so yes yeah, it's what happens, Bob. It's just, I guess, it's real life always takes on. Question for next time. What is your favourite power-up in a classic game? For me, I used to love Spy Hunter when you turned into a boat, but all the other power-ups were brilliant. That is a really, really good question. Favourite power-up in a classic game? Whoa. Oh, I'm just trying to think. I mean, R-Type has got some awesome power-ups. Um, I think for me, yeah, I mean, you know, some of the bullet hell shooters are awesome. You know, you've they're just amazing. They look amazing, like pyrotechnics. I think for me, the favorite power up. It's a power up I always enjoy getting in a game, and it's because you've got to earn it. And it's uh, in 1942 when you get the two wee planes that spin down the screen and join on, so you've got one little plane and you've got your plane and you've got the other little plane at the side of it. That's probably my favourite power-up, that makes a big, 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 big difference. Um, there's lots of cracking power-ups, but I do like that one in particular. So anyway, listen Bob, thanks very much buddy. Ye olde gamer Steve, nice to see you well mate. I've had a shit week. Yesterday I was at the dentist, I had an extraction, two fillings and a cleaning and today I'm still spitting blood and in more pain than I was before. Watching your waffle bright sorry, watching your waffle brightens my day a lot. Thank you. By the way, if you have any spectrums you don't mind selling to a good home, I want one, but eBay prices are absurd. Also, yes, you could rent systems here. Several times I rented an Atari twenty six hundred before emulators existed. Unfortunately, Steve, I don't have any spectrums. I sold four, I think it was on eBay. I don't have any spare ones at all, mate. The only one I've got now uh, is my Just Specky. That's the only Spectrum I've got and then I will eventually be getting my uh, Spectrum next. I might, I might sell my Just Specky once I get the Spectrum next, once I've given it a good kind of, see how, kind of how it runs. Um, yeah, sorry to hear about your, your, uh, your dentist woes. Never, I never looked after my teeth as a kid and then when I was about 17, no, I was older than that, when I was about 20 odd, I got the most horrendous uh, abscess in my, my top lip and I ended up at the dentist and it cost me hundreds of pounds and I, ever since that happened I've always gone to the dentist every six months. 
I mean, my teeth look like condemned houses, you know, I've got more fillings in a subway, but they're, I don't get any pain in them now, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, yeah, so unfortunately I don't have any, any spare spectrums, buddy. But listen, you know what? See that one comment you've made there? Watching your waffle brightens my idea a lot. That in itself makes this all worthwhile. And I, I mean that sincerely. It's, it's wicked. It, it cheers me up when I think that me talking pish actually brightens somebody's day. That's awesome. So listen, thank you very, very much, Steve, for your comment. Uh, and lastly, yeah, it was uh, Dave Tome. Sir, your videos are becoming dark and depressing. Is this a symptom of your state of mind? I'm absolutely fine. I've not got a depressing state of mind. But like I said, if you've, I think I actually said that in my... Uh, my reply, yeah, what I've said here is, Dave, I'm fully aware they've been pretty dark these last few months, um, though if you're a regular to the channel, you'll know I've always worn my heart on my sleeve, and I do, I sometimes maybe say things I maybe shouldn't do, but you know what, that's me, so, and listen guys, I'm going to get going, it's not, well, it's 40 minutes, you've still got 40 minutes of me talking nonsense, I absolutely promise you, and I mean this, I am going to get a couple of videos out, I don't know what they're going to be, I'll try and maybe get an arcade perfect my arse out. Um, I don't know. I'm going to get a couple of videos. I've actually got a wee list of videos I've been wanting to make for quite a while and I've just never got around to it. All I will say is um, there are still things that are not good about my life. I am not. don't mean that. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to go into any details. And when things come along, it can sometimes... My head isn't in the right place. So when that happens, I won't be doing a video because... You know, um, you've got to be in the right frame of mind to make videos. Absolutely. There's no point in trying to record a video if you're feeling pissed off or whatever. So, listen guys, I'm going to get going. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching.